Right. Hello. My name is Derek Knowles, and I'm a PhD student under Professor Grace Scow in the Stanford Navigation and Autonomous Vehicles Laboratory. In this presentation, I will overview my past research in how to detect bad satellite signals without assuming that you have background in math or satellite navigation. I formally gave a version of this presentation in the Institute of Navigation Conference for Global Navigation Satellite Systems 2021, and links to that version of this presentation and accompanying paper are included in the description of this video. Okay, so first to understand uh, the importance of this work, I'm going to give a brief overview, uh, background information about satellite navigation. Okay, so say that you have a friend who is doing a cross um, country trip of the United States um, and they call you up on the phone and say, hey friend, um, actually I'm lost. I don't know where I'm at. Can you help me out? And you say, of course I can help you out, um, help figure out where you are. Can you give me any landmarks? Um, and your friend says, well, I know that I'm 1,400 miles away from the Golden Gate Bridge. So, okay, that doesn't seem super helpful, but you get out your map of the United States, and on this map, you chart a circle of 1,400 miles, and you say, okay, I know you're somewhere in the middle of the US, but I just know that you're somewhere on the circle. Can you give me another landmark? And your friend says, okay, well, I also know that I'm 1,300 miles from the Empire State Building. And you say, okay, strange landmark choice, but you plot it on the map again. And now you can figure out that your friend is either in North Dakota or in Oklahoma. So you tell your friend, okay, can you give me another landmark, a third landmark? I need one more landmark to figure out um, where you are. I know you're at one of these two intersections of these circles, but I don't know which one you're at. Can you give me another landmark? Friend says, okay, as a third one, I can tell you that I am 450 miles from the St. Louis Arch. So now you plant, you uh, plot that circle on the map, and you know yet that your friend has to lie at the intersection of all three of these circles. Now there's only one spot that could be, and that's in the beautiful state of Oklahoma. Okay, turns out that satellite navigation actually operates in a similar manner. Um, satellite signals, um, we have these satellites high above um, the Earth circling in orbits. Um, those orbits are well known um, because they are regular. Um, and the satellite signals give us a distance uh, to these satellites. So when uh, a, a receiver, say a GPS receiver in your phone, when you get a satellite signal, what that signal is actually telling you is um, the distance between your, your, your receiver and the satellite. So if you have enough of those, um, similar to this other example, if you have enough satellites, you can pinpoint your location on the Earth, which is super helpful. This is, this is great, and it usually works extremely well. However, um, so, so it works extremely well, generally in open sky conditions, meaning you could you have line of sight to a satellite. Um, and so when, when you can have line of satellite, there's not a lot of tall other things nearby. Um, satellite signals are generally fairly good. However, um, if there are things blocking your way, say you're in a downtown blocking and there's tall buildings around, what happens is the satellite signals don't come directly to your phone, instead they hit off a building and then to you. What that means is those satellite signals take a bit longer to get to you, and that changes um, the calculations of that, that pinpointing process and makes your phone think that you're in a location other than where you actually are. And so you may have already noticed this if you've traveled, um, try to have GPS navigation in a downtown before, sometimes it doesn't work real well. Okay, so if this is a problem, 
there's got to be other ways. There's got to be ways to fix it, right? To be able to detect when you have a bad signal so you can remove that bad signal and not use it in your, in your pinpointing um, calculations. Okay, it turns out there are several methods that already exist. Um, two of them, two of the main methods are called residual based. Um, and a second one is called solution separation. Um, I will briefly discuss these methods and then add a third new algorithm um, called Euclidean distance matrix um, based uh, method. And so I'll explain all of these um, three different methods uh, shortly. Okay, so the first um, method that we have is called residual base. Um, what this method does, and so our, remember our, our goal is to be able to detect when we have bad signals, bad satellite signals. What this method does is if you know about where your receiver is, so this is saying you know about where your phone is located, um, for example, um, and you know where the satellite is, then you roughly know what distance you expect to be between your um, between the satellite and your receiver in your phone, for example. Um, this method then compares that expected distance with the measured distance that you get from the satellite signal itself. Um, and that difference is called the residual, and that's where the name comes from. If that difference is small, then you say, okay, this must be a good signal. However, if that distance is bad, for example, if that measured signal says that it's much, the distance is much greater than it, you'd expect it to be, then you can say, oh, that signal must have been a bad signal. And then you can avoid using it in your position solution. Um, and so this method is fairly fast to compute, but it's somewhat circular in the fact that it requires an estimate of your position of your receiver's position. So if you really want to know where your receiver is located, um, you want to have a very good estimate of where your receiver is located. It turns out that with this method, you already have to have a pretty good estimate of where it's located, um, which might be problematic. Um, second method, common method, is called solution separation. What this method does is you don't, um, normally you actually are getting satellite signals from a dozen, say, different satellites at a time. What this method does is instead of using all of those satellites in your pinpointing those um, algorithm of figuring out where you are, instead it'll say use 11 out of the 12 of these subsets of um, measurements. Um, and it will create all these subsets where one measurement is removed. Um, and it will use, it will calculate your position, will estimate your position using all of these different measurement subsets. And it turns out if you have all good signals, all of these position estimates um, will be relatively close together. However, if you have a satellite say this third one on the right, giving you bad signals represented by these red dashed lines, turns out that you'll be computing all these measurement subsets. And then when you remove that faulty measurement, um, or you're using 11 out of the 12 measurements you have, and you've removed that 12th measurement as your bad one, your position estimate will drastically change. It will drastically move. And that outlier is a sign that you had a bad signal. Um, the con of this method is that it is extremely slow to compute. Um, all of these position estimates take time and creating all these subsets, that all takes quite a bit of time. So my research looked at how can we create a third super fast method to be able to detect um, bad or faulty satellite signals. Um, and this method uses something called a Euclidean distance matrix. A matrix is simply a construction of numbers organized in a special way, um, an array or a special list of numbers. Um, and those numbers come from specifically distances between pairs of points. Okay, so, um, and what I will, what 
turns out to be the case is that this new method is super fast compared to previous methods for detecting bad signals. Okay, so um, now I'm going to explain in a simple example, um, give you some intuition for these Euclidean distance matrices. So a Euclidean distance matrix or an EDM is filled with these square distances between all pairs of points in a system. Okay, so on the left here, we have a system comprised of four points, um, X1, X2, X3, X4, four separate points. And in the right here, this grid represents our matrix. So our, our array of numbers and um, the rows and the columns are labels. And this matrix shows the, the interaction between um, the distances between all pairs of points in the system. Um, for example, um, this first element is the distance between x1, so that's that's our row, and the column x1. Okay, so these the diagonal is actually quite easy. We can say that the distance between any point and itself is simply zero. Okay, so next we'll look at C. Um, we can figure out the distance between x1 and x2. And we figure out that has a distance of two units. Then we can fill in the spot of this matrix with two squared. We're squaring. Um, so two times itself. Two times two is four. Um, and we fill it in the spot that uh, looks at the um, between x2, so x2 in the row, x1 in the column. And then the symmetric has this axis of symmetry along the diagonal where x1 is now in the row, x2 in the column. So we can fill in those two spots with two squared. Um, we can do something similar for the distance between x1 and x3. Three squared is nine. So we fill in nine in the appropriate locations. Do the same thing for three squared between x1 and x4. And then we can finish out the matrix um, using all of these square distances between all pairs of points in the system. Okay, so this is, a, this is cool. Now we know how to create a Euclidean distance matrix, but this is just a simple example. How do we do this in the case where we have satellites? Well, it turns out that we actually already have um, our, our receiver. Uh, for example, a, a GPS receiver already has all of this information. Um, because the GPS receiver, um, the satellite signals themselves give the distances between the receiver and the satellites. And then we already know, uh, because the satellites have these regular orbits, we know where they are located. And then we can calculate the distances between each satellite, between all the satellites. So um, we have, again, our matrix, our Euclidean distance matrix here. And these yellow, um, the leftmost column and topmost row, these yellow spots can be filled with those from the satellite signals um, with the distances between the receiver and the satellites. And then these blue spots in this bottom right, all of these spots in the matrix can be filled with the square distances between all those satellites. Okay, so now we've created this Euclidean distance matrix, but Remember, we don't really care about this matrix. What we care about is figuring out the difference between if we have um, if we have a bad satellite signal or not. Because if we have a bad satellite signal, it's messing with our position estimate and we want to be able to remove it. So how can we use this, this matrix, this special matrix to be able to figure out when we have a bad signal? OK, so turns out that there is some exciting math um, that essentially uses this matrix um, and using all these distances, essentially it's looking at, it's trying to solve a puzzle saying, I have all these distances, where can I put points so that um, I can um, solve this puzzle so that all of these distances fit together in an organized manner. Um, as described about in, the, in this matrix. And turns out that um, this math 
shows that if all satellite signals are good, then this puzzle can be solved. Um, all these distances can be fit together in a three-dimensional space. Um, and this math, um, we use um, something called eigenvalue decomposition, which is a big complicated name. But essentially all that, what that tells us is that, yeah, all of these distances can fit together well in a three-dimensional space. Um, however, if we have bad satellite signals um, represented again by this red dashed line on the right, we have a bad signal. What this math tells us is that all of a sudden, um, this puzzle is unsolvable in a regular three-dimensional space. All these distances, it tells us that all these distances can't fit together in a three-dimensional space. It actually has to go to some space greater than three dimensions. It has to go into the fourth or fifth dimension in order to be able to solve this puzzle of fitting all of these distances together. Um, and that in itself is an indicator saying, well, we know our world is a three-dimensional space. Um, and so if you have to go in the fourth dimensional space, um, then we have a bad satellite signal. Um, what's exciting is that um, this can happen, this math happen, can happen extremely quickly, super fast. Um, and not only does it tell us that a bad signal exists, but it also, the math also tells us what signal is the bad signal. So then we can easily remove that signal and create our position uh, estimate using only the good signals. Okay, so my research also um, not only showed some of this fun theoretical math, but we tested it on real world data. Um, so we used two data sets of, in both these cases, these were cars driving around cities with tall buildings um, with um, receiving satellite signals. What we found is that comparing to those prior works of residual based or solution separation, this new method um, that uses Euclidean distance matrices or EDMs can just as accurately as those other two methods be able to pick out when a satellite signal is bad. Not only can it pick it out though, but it can do it much faster than those other two methods. Um, additionally, um, all of these methods, there are some small um, parameters, variables that you can tune in order to get um, better results. And it turns out that this method, um, you can put pretty much whatever you want in those parameters and still get reasonable results versus those other two methods. You really have to be, um, you have to take a lot of time tuning those other methods. Okay, so this is, um, hopefully I've explained how this is useful for satellite signals. Is it useful for anything else? Turns out, yes. Um, robots, which, are, which um, are what I'm passionate about, uh, use all kinds of um, sensors uh, that use distances in order to be able to localize themselves. So not only can this be helpful in order to be able to detect bad satellite signals from um, global navigation satellite systems like GPS or the Russian European equivalents, but you could also use distances from cameras or later uh, lasers, that's what LIDAR is, or other types of signals like Wi-Fi or cellular network. Um, so the exciting part is that, um, and I'm looking forward to the future, is testing this algorithm not only on satellite signals, but other types of signals as well. And that concludes this presentation. Thank you.